Thanks for tuning into How's Things, a podcast and radio show from the David A. Howe Public Library, recorded right here in Wellsville, New York. I'm Nick Gunning, and today I'm joined by longtime library staffer Daphne O'Kelly. Daphne, welcome. Hi. You recently hit your one year at the library. Yes, I have. When was it? It was uh, in April. April? <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. No, I think it was no, before that. I was trying to think because I feel like when you and you and Heather Malloy both started about the same time, and I feel like the library was just straight up closed when you started. Yeah. Isn't that right? Um, I remember my so first bizarre. week was yeah. when we just opened the okay. public. Okay. So I was training while we were still closed. Okay. And I started right when everyone else started. So it was, it's, it was nice. Uh, so we've been compiling the annual report here at the library, and it just blows my mind that that was last year. Like 2021, we started with the building still closed. Yeah. Time has ceased to function as we know it normally. I feel at like least the that's... summer went by so quickly. Well, that's true. Yeah. It's, it's hard to believe where we are. We have, uh, speaking of time and the passage of time, Daphne, I have a, a treat for you today because we're going to do a Lonely Hearts book club. I can't wait. Which means <laughs> you're going to be excited. It's a good one. This is where uh, we find something from the stacks that's either never circulated or has never circulated in the history of like digitization, so decades. Uh, and then we just kind of figure out why. So We're going to dust off the tone. We are. We are going to. We're going to see how it goes. But before we get into that, let's open up our books and see where our bookmarks are at. Daphne, I know we were talking about this before we started recording, and you were on a bit of a hunt yourself to try to figure out the name of the book that you were just looking at. Did you figure it out? I did not actually figure That's out a no. the title. Okay. Um, but it was a fashion history book. Okay. And um, I know something while working at the main desk, yeah. I come across a lot of like art and history books, yeah. and I can't help but to like look through them while oh, yeah. you're at the desk. Oh, yeah. So there was one that I saw... Um, and it was a it was a fashion history book, and I was just looking through a few of the pages, and I was like, "This is incredible! I have to check this out." Mm-hmm. So I, I just checked that out, um, and just returned. I feel like it might have belonged to a different library. I couldn't find it in the stacks okay, or okay. on the shelf. So, mm-hmm. and then I'm also reading um, "The Flowers of Evil" by Bode- um, Charles Baudelaire, which is a poetry. Oh, book. oh, okay. Um, it's French po- poetry. No, Poetry Month was last last month. It's too late. It's, it's so it's good too, though. It's too late. I'm I've sorry. I probably checked out this book like four times, oh. so, like different translations of it okay. because every um, translator has a different um, sort of take yeah. of the original French. Interesting. I never really thought about translated poetry. I think that would really... It's, it's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool because huh. you'll find your favorite poem and then you'll read it in a different translation and just how a different... Um, translator sort of interprets some yeah. of the words and tries to change how things rhyme, and it's 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 pretty incredible. Yeah, that seems like it would have a very different kind of impact on something rather than just. But even even with the novel, I mean, even even with the famous novel, yeah, uh, you, you can see the differences, and sometimes it's just like mm, that's not quite right. Yeah, it's like do you so, do direct translation or do yeah. you kind of take your own interpretation of yeah. how the words are supposed to be? Right, so it's it's always interesting. Right. Huh. Interesting. What is your go-to? Like, what if if you're just gonna like you're stuck at home for the week? You want to grab a couple of books with you? Like, what's it gonna be? It's always gonna probably be poetry and maybe some manga. Okay. Well, I just finished reading Uzumaki by Junji, Junji Ito. Okay. Which is a horror manga and it is insane. How many volumes is that? Um, it's just one. Oh, okay. It was released in chapters, I think, in a newspaper or Got some it. sort of magazine. And then it's one big collection. Um, I specifically requested that we order that book so nice. that we could have it here. It's okay. really good. I, I definitely suggest it if you like cosmic horror and sort of like psychological crazy stuff. And it's all hand drawn and the art is incredible. Um, it's kind of gruesome though. So Okay. Just, okay. <laughs> yeah. My wife is usually my guide when it comes to manga because it's not something I have a huge background in. But she's always like, you want to get a couple of volumes because they go quick. So yeah. that's a, that's good advice that I, I take like it to the, heart. The older, um, I really like watching like nineties, okay, two thousands, mm-hmm. um, like anime movies. Okay, like Akira, Perfect yeah. Blue is like my favorite movie. Okay. it's pretty much Black Swan, but anime. And okay, it's, it's, it's incredible. Okay, and the soundtrack is amazing. So you said like the the retro stuff is your go to. Anything, any current mangas or anime that you'd recommend? Um, I actually, I mean, I was watching Beastars. Okay. Um, and it, it's okay. I don't really like the second season, but I have been watching... That's so disappointing when that... In any show, that's disappointing. When you're, like, locked in for season one, and then season two starts, and you're like, hmm... Have you, you know? watched Russian Doll? No. You should watch Russian Doll. What is that? It's, okay, um, it's sort of, it's a Groundhog Day kind of thing. I love Groundhog Day. Um, and it's this woman, and she's stuck, I think it's, like, her, like, 30th 
oh, birthday wow. or something, okay. and she's stuck on her birthday. Ooh, on a birthday? Yeah. No, I don't... Um, and she kind of has to uncover uh, why. And um, they just had their second season. I just watched that. Where where is this? Where can I watch it? This is on Netflix. Netflix. Yes, okay. Yes, it's 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 really good. Um, is it a Netflix original? Because they yes. just cancel those before they yeah. go anywhere. Yeah, season three is probably like going to be halfway done, um, and they're probably just pull the plug. Yeah. Pull the plug. Yeah. You watched Umbrella Academy? No. You need to watch I know, I'm Academy. sorry. You've said that before. Lots of people have said, you got to watch and or read Umbrella Academy, it, and I just have Yeah, it. it's great. And okay. I mean, the, the comics are good, too. Okay. Um, definitely a, a different tone with the comics. The art style yeah. is a little bit more gritty. Okay. Um, but uh, the show is incredible. I love it. I watch, I, it always makes me think of uh, Doom Patrol. Have you watched or read any of yes. Doom Patrol? Yes, yes. Okay. I watched a few um, got with the lady who's like, made out of like rubber and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's like, uh-huh. the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Gerard Way, who uh, who wrote Umbrella Academy, wrote a run on on uh, Doom Patrol that came out I don't know five or six years ago, and that was just so weird and, and trippy, you know. So it it uh, he, I think his style really suited Doom Patrol. So yes, I'm gonna move Umbrella Academy up on the list. You've made it happen. So what are you watching? What am I watching? Uh, well, speaking of canceled things, I've been watching Batwoman, mm. which is in season three right now, which did just get canceled. Oh. Batwoman, uh, you're not a fan, right? I, I, it was it was interesting. Iffy, yeah, it was interesting. You were there for Poison Ivy content, That's, is that yeah, correct? That was, okay, that was it. and it didn't do it for you. Mm, it, it, I don't know. I, I can't spoil it, can I? No, because no. I haven't gotten there yet. Oh well. I just just the seeds, literal seeds of Poison Ivy, have just begun. It's interesting. Okay, it's a thumbs they, down. They they uh, they definitely went for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. The thing with Batwoman was, you know, Ruby Rose was Batwoman in the first season, and then she left, and they brought in a new character. And season two, I feel like, was really sort of mired in explaining that transition. Mm -hmm. And season three is where it has just started to sort of settle into, like, okay, this is the weird, campy, Batman-esque show that we are. Yeah, And I was kind of digging that vibe, you know? Like, the the gap between the actress change, like, I I know is kind of... A lot of people were saying, oh, this is weird. There's yeah. like a lot of unexplained kind of just plot it's, Yeah, it's true. Things. But that's why I feel like season three was really where it was like, okay, this is what the show is going to be from now on. And here we go. And snip. And maybe so. I'll have to watch some of the actual episodes. Because I really looked up online mm-hmm. when episodes yeah. Poison Ivy was in. Yeah. I just watched those ones. Oh, that's, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, That'd be a hard, that'd be a hard <laughs> place to jump in. So I don't know. I don't think I could enthusiastic, enthusiastically give two thumbs up to Batwoman. But for what it is, I, I've been having a good time with it. It was and entertaining. I was yeah, it was entertaining. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's just one of those shows where, like, I can't say that it's good. But there was aspects that I just liked. Like, I yeah. liked watching it. Yeah. But I'm doing that. I'm doing Legion over on FX, which is uh, X-Men related. Hmm. And that's really good. It's trippy and weird. It's three seasons. We have all the DVDs here if you still... Do you have a DVD player? I do, actually. <laughs> you do? Yeah. Way to go. Okay. Uh, and then... I don't know. I'm watching Moon Knight on Disney Plus. You, Knight. Are you watching Moon Knight? I'm not. I'm, I don't know. I'm very whatever about Moon Knight. It. It. I looked at the trailers. And yeah. It seems. It seems interesting. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, is he like a? Is he like a mummy or something? No, he's not a mummy. He's. He's. I. He's. I don't know. Multiple like personalities inhabit this one body, oh. and Moon Knight is like. Kind of the enforcer of, of these Egyptian gods, and oh, so okay. like, but there's some mummy the stuff vessel. going on. There's there are some mummy stuff happening. Okay. There's some okay. mummy stuff happening. Yeah, and it's, I guess it's just it's a weird pull for Disney to do Moon Knight because Moon Knight is historically a very dark character, and this kind of has that like Disney sheen on it. I feel like if Disney was like, we're gonna do Ghost Rider, it's oh. like maybe don't don't yeah. do it. Yeah. So Did I you don't watch know. Morbius. No, I haven't seen Morbius. Have you seen it? No. <laughs> I don't think anybody has. So. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I, I'll i see it. I mean, when it comes out, when I can just watch it from the comfort of my own home, sure, I'll watch yeah. Morbius, but I, I haven't seen it yet. I saw Jared Leto as, like, the, the <laughs> title, and I was like, I think I'll pass. That but was enough was, for you? He was good in House of Gucci as, like, a laughable character. Oh, see, I didn't really like him in House of Gucci. I think I was just too distracted by, like, there's Jared Leto in a fat suit yeah. for some reason. Well, I just thought the whole movie was very campy and like, it was. crazy, which I like. I could have used a little bit of a more campy. 
How about yeah, that? Yeah, because I feel like they were trying to be a little informative, and I was like, okay, I like how right. this is going. And then it got crazy. Yeah. And then it kind of stepped back. It's like, right. no, you got to pick one. Right, I know. Every once in a while, yeah, it was really like, wait, are you playing this straight? Like, no, we need <laughs> we need yeah. like the fun here. There was a scene you know? with him like, dancing in it that I just, I cringed. I cringed <laughs> in theater. Jared Leto? I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you see, speaking of Batman-related things, did you see Suicide Squad with Jared Leto as Joker? Yes. Okay, thoughts? Well, not many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Uh, that's fair. That's, mm. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. I, I, did you watch the second uh, Suicide, Suicide Squad? Yes, I did. I liked that one, actually. I'm just not down for those characters, I guess. I liked it better than the first one. I liked the Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey, Harley Quinn movie better that, than either of yeah, them. So. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. I liked that one a lot. Ewan McGregor just, like, blew it away uh, in that. I couldn't believe I'm it. I'm sort of in love with him. Are you really? Yeah, yeah. I literally just rewatched The Phantom Menace yesterday. Oh my gosh. For the first time in, I don't know, a decade? And I kind of liked it this time. Is really? that weird? What do you think of it? It's uh, that's the one with the with the that's, Darth Maul. It's Darth Maul and Qui Gon Jinn, okay. Jar Jar Binks. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to do some backtracking. Yeah, little kid Anakin. Are you an angel? Oh. You know. Oh. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I I've always hated that movie, and I watched it this time, I and like I was the, like, okay. The special effects. Oh, are, they're. they're yeah, because I I love I love like the the old Star Wars movies that have like practical effects that oh, they, yeah. they, they they don't really use CGI at all. Yeah. And I like that. I mean, it looks weird and spooky and kind of uncanny. Yeah. But I like that better than any of the CGI stuff. It's I just, agree. Ugh. And I think the Phantom Menace that that was the number one weakness, even more than Jar Jar Binks. The I don't understand <laughs> why like with all the money Disney has, just go in there and like fix those effects i mean yeah. george lucas is not shy about going back and revisiting work so yeah i don't know i i just think go back and fix them and you have a much better product but are you excited about the obi-wan show it's coming out in may i didn't even know there was gonna what be that. i'm not a huge star wars fan okay i, mean, I watched... you just said you're in love with you and mcgregor yes from okay I, I i watched the movie down with love one time as a child okay and i was obsessed with it yeah that's and a great then, movie and i just i mean his voice his look it's just great uh-huh it's great Very i charming. don't understand like i don't understand his singing because, like, there's things your body has to do to sing, like, and hit the notes and have the range that he has. And every time I see him singing or hear him singing, it's right. like he's just sitting on a couch right. and just, like, blasting these high notes. And I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, he was in Moulin Rouge, too. Moulin Rouge, yeah. Incredible. I think that's why they did the musical number in Down With Love, because he had just done Moulin Rouge and Renee Zellweger had just done Chicago. And they were yeah. like, well, we can't not have a musical did number. Did you watch, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, There's Something Up With Pam or something? No, with Zellweger. Oh. Yeah, no, oh, I haven't seen it's, it. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Okay. It's kind of weird because it's, it's a true story, Okay. which kind of makes some of it sort of comical. Okay. Um, and I mean, it's it's great. It's great. It's very campy. My mom was watching it, and she suggested mm -hmm. it to me. So I was like, I guess I'll check this out. And I love Renee, so I was like, I'm gonna check it out. And I, you know, it's kind of it feels a little exploitative, just oh, a little oh, bit. Okay, I don't know anything. I mean, I've seen previews. I have no idea what it's about. It's it's. But I believe you. It's yeah. Um, I don't know because I feel like if you had if you had a tragedy happen to like your family or something, yeah. and then you have NBC or something make a little right. short miniseries that's kind of comical well i don't know yeah i was kind of thinking the same maybe not quite the same but the girl from uh, plainville with al fanning plainview oh plainville? yeah i don't know mm. that's a similar kind of thing yeah, where it's like if this is based on a real story it's mm. kind of hard to watch sometimes yeah. but fascinating but it's I, interesting I mean, they probably talk to family and stuff i'm like, sure hey, the family's okay? making some do. cash so, yeah. I, I would assume yeah yeah that the checks will will still cash regardless uh boy anything else on the old watch list um, not really. Okay. I, I'm. I don't really watch a whole lot of TV yeah. or movies, but. Um, I'm. I want to see Doctor Strange. It's not out yet at our time of recording, but. <sighs> Tilda Swinton. You're you're big for I Tilda Swinton. Am big on Tilda Swinton. Okay, Tilda Swinton and Ewan McGregor. Yes. Hmm. Yes, Tilda okay. Swinton. I want her to be my mom. Oh. Or, or Angelina Jolie. She can adopt me. Hmm. Neither one of those seem like they'd be like very fun moms. I think. Oh, I think it'd be great. Do you? Yeah. I mean, for oh. me. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, they don't—they don't have to do anything. They don't have to interact with me or anything. But they're oh, just yeah, like, like sort of. So you want them, like you as a functioning adult, want them to be your mom. Yes. As an adult, so like right now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then yeah, that sounds like fun. Yeah. I sounds like a good time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I yeah, I don't think. Well, you know, I am reading stuff that I didn't tell you about. I just speaking of Doctor Strange, read Young Avengers, which uh, style over substance is what the first volume is called. Interesting. This has the character America Chavez in it, and I have not read her before. 
Uh, I haven't, I haven't, I don't think I've read anything that had that character in it, and she's going to be a major part of the new Doctor Strange movie. So I was like, oh, wow. I should probably read something with her in it. So I read Young Avengers. Uh, I read Dune Messiah, the, which is the second of Frank Herbert's Dune book, about half the length of the original. Trippy, weird. I liked it. It's a different kind of book. Dune. Nice. Uh, currently reading a Star Trek book called One Constant Star by David George III. How do you feel about Star Trek? Oh, uh, the the little f- fluffy guys. Tribbles? Love them. You love Tribbles? I love okay. them. And the Borg Queen. Tribbles and the Borg Queen. Yeah, those, huh. are my, those are my top two. Those are just a really, that's like sort of an Elf and Omega yeah. situation there. Yeah, that's, that's kind of. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tilda Swinton as the Borg Queen. With the the fluffy thing yeah <laughs> yeah Ewan yeah. McGregor can voice the yes, dribbles yes they don't talk oh, but that'd that's be all right great. that'd be great I'm reading a Robert Parker book called Early Autumns this is one of his Spencer books the one that is cracking me up though is one that uh, Ali Stevick, youth librarian you're familiar with Ali I am you remember her with Ali she and I are doing a YA for adults book club uh, and it's tied in with Pride Month and so we're doing one called Cool for the Summer by Delia Adler nice and it's basically the plot of Greece. And there are a lot of little Grease references in there. Okay, nice. Allie has never seen Grease. Oh. She's like vaguely familiar Does with the like concept. she like it so far? She, I don't think she's started it yet. Okay. But it's funny because she's only vaguely familiar with Grease. Like sort of, you know, opposites attract. And you got your thing. Grease on Ice. I do have a Grease mug. on Ice mug, yes. And was in Grease 75 times at dinner theater. Oh my gosh. So... That's a lot of time. Do you want me to do the whole play from start to finish? Do you want me to do the hand jive right now? I mean, a little something like that. So I'm, every time the character's like, oh, this person is hopelessly devoted, or what are we going to do oh, with our summer nights? That's great. I'm that like, is great. Keep it coming. That is great. Keep it coming. I do like Grease a lot. Yeah. It's, it's a good movie, and it's a good show. I, it's filthy is the only thing. I think yeah. that's the thing you don't realize. When I was a kid, I sang the Grease songs all the time. Yeah. And when you get older, you're like, oh, oh. Grease Lightning. Huh. Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's a, I don't think there's like a PG thing they say no. in that song. No. Not a single thing. <laughs> but it, it is catchy. It is catchy. And yeah. 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 I always like Frenchie with the pink hair. Yeah. Always. Yeah. yeah. Grease 2? How do you feel about Grease oh, 2? Lord I, Left? I don't feel about Grease 2. you never two. seen it? I've seen it and I, and I forget it for a reason. I, I think <laughs> oh my it, gosh. Yeah. When I, so I, I worked at the Sinner Theater and, and we do shows like that, you know, mm-hmm. 7,500 shows, we do seven shows a week. The Grease cast that I was in, we had such a good time and we all became like obsessed with Grease 2. And we'd always joke about how the next season we were going to come back and do a stage version of, of Grease, Grease 2. 2. And so we'd like sing all the songs backstage and everything. It was it was a magical time. So Grease 2 has so a, you're, has you're a, a space in my of heart. Two? Well, I guess maybe in the same way I'm a fan of Batwoman. Like, I recognize okay. that it's bad. Okay. But if you're going to give me Michelle Pfeiffer, like, belting out about how she wants a cool writer, okay. like, you know, I'm not going to leave. Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do a Grease spotlight? Should we just scrap this Lonely Hearts Book Club and just, I, <laughs> just talk about I'm, Grease I'm, the whole I mean, time? I mean, I don't know how much Grease content okay. I have. All right. Um, All right. No, that's fair. That's fair. I push too hard. I understand. Uh, let's move into some book news. How does that sound? Yeah. Okay. Well, we recently had an award, the Edgar Awards, came out. Uh, how, are you a mystery fan? I'm sort of a mystery fan. Okay. But you wouldn't be rushing to the mystery section to check out a book. If it was, like, short stories, I would. Do you um, like short stories? Yes, I love short stories. When Malik was on, we were covering a short story award. He really could have added some content to that one. I probably could have. All right. All right, let's look at the Edgar Awards. So... Here they are, in no particular order. And they're named after Edgar Allan Poe? They sure are. I like poetry. Oh, hey, there you so go. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Connection. Uh, best Young Adult Book, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Boulay. Uh, this was published by Macmillan's Children's Publishing. This has, this has been on a lot of lists. Like, I think it was, it was shortlisted, at least, in the um, Youth Media Awards. I can't remember what it won, but this one keeps popping up in the YA world. And so this is just another uh, award shot for it here. Concealed by Christina Diaz Gonzalez is the best juvenile fiction. This is mm-hmm. put out by Scholastic. Best short story. Here you go. The Road to Hannah in the Alfred Hitchcock Mystery Magazine. Ooh. It's by R.T. Lawton. Interesting. I'm shocked that those magazines still, like, go. You know, there's, like, the Asimov sci-fi, yeah. the Alfred Hitchcock. I guess I'm, I guess someone's still reading them. Would you pick up a magazine of short stories and read them? I honestly would. Huh. 
I probably okay. would if I was in a cafe or something. Right. If I had some downtime, I'd just probably pick that up. And... Well, speaking of Alfred Hitchcock, the best critical and biographical book went to The Twelve Lives of Alfred Hitchcock by The Anatomy of the Master of Suspense by Edward White. He is an interesting fellow. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever hear about how he tortured Tippi Hedren on the birds? Locking her yes. in a room, throwing birds at her. I, I heard something Crazy like stuff. that. Wow, yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Best Fact Crime, Last Call, A True Story of Love, Lust, and Murder in Queer New York by Elon Green. Interesting. So the uh, Director's Advisory Council for our library system does a book club every month. And this was the most recent book club pick. Huh. And I usually do that book club. I listen to the, the beginning of this book, but the crimes in it are so like, ugh, it was too much. I couldn't do it. Yeah. So, I, anyway. But True crime is, you know, it's sometimes hard to digest. It is very hard, yeah. Best paperback original, Bobby March Will Live Forever by Alan Parks. Based on no facts, what's your take on this book? I think he will live forever. Okay. Uh, best first novel by an American author, Dear Season by Aaron Flanagan. And finally, best novel, Five Decembers by James Kestrel. This is a hard case crime book. That's funny. Hard case, hard case crime is an input imprint uh, of mystery novels that is very much, they all kind of look like 1950s dime store paperbacks. Ooh. And they all sort of have that flavor to them too. Yeah. I don't know of a hard case crime that's ever won an Edgar Award before. So that's really so that's like interesting. Kind of yeah, vibe. yeah. Interesting. They just they have that vibe. They they kind of go for a feel of this is the kind of thing that you would pick up in a drugstore, like while you're at the soda fountain. You nice. know. So you hear like the saxophone playing in the background <laughs> yeah. and stuff. Yep, you got it. You got it. So that's the Edgar Awards. So we'll have all these in our collection, and you can find more at mysterywriters.org. So does Edgar pick these awards? He's he passed away. Oh yeah oh. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want I didn't want to be the one to tell you, but he I'm, didn't I'm make it. Out he didn't make time. it. He didn't make it. Oh, Let's move on to the hardcover bestseller. So this is the hardcover bestseller list for May eighth, twenty twenty two. Number ten on the list. New this week: The Memory Librarian by Janelle Monet, a companion collection of stories to Monet's twenty eighteen album, Dirty, I love Dirty Computer. Monet. Do you? She's great. Pink. On Dirty Computer. Have it's you listened to her 2018 album, Dirty Computer? Yeah, you it's, have? Okay. the song Pink um, and I think Make Me Feel. It's really, really good. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Jane 57821 pushes back against the few who have the power to control or erase memories. You know, I, I've seen, And it's short stories. I might have to give that a review. This I've is just a like few, made for you. Um, like artists, musicians releasing books. Um, yeah. Japanese Breakfast okay. um, had a book called, uh, I think it's something, Growing Up in H Mart or something. Okay. It was, it was pretty good. I don't know what that is. It's pretty good. Tell me about this band. Um, it's like kind of like an indie alt band. Okay. Um, they just came out with a new album, I think called, uh, is it Paprika? Or maybe that's one of the songs on it. But it's, it's really good. Okay. They're, they're really good. Interesting. Uh, number nine, 72 weeks on the list. That's more than a year, Ooh. for those of you keeping track at home. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, Nora that Seed. Yeah. Must have been here since I started. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Nora Seed finds a library. And when it's off, you're, you're out. Okay. <laughs> you're gone. Okay. Uh, the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Nora Seed finds a library beyond the edge of the universe that contains books with multiple possibilities of the lives one could have lived. I feel like I've definitely seen patrons pick that book Yeah, out. it's been pretty popular. Yeah. That's been pretty popular. Yeah. Uh, what Happened to the Bennetts by Lisa Scottolini, a brush with members of the drug trafficking organization ushers Ooh. a suburban family into the witness protection program. Wild. Sounds like I wonder was, what happened to the Bennetts. Sounds like it was written in 1992 to me. Okay. I'll have to give it a read it if I want to know what happened. Oh, you, you're going to read it? If I want to know what happened to the oh, okay. Bennetts. Number seven, The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley, nine weeks on the list. Jess has suspicions about her half-brother's neighbors when he goes missing. What a nice little summary. That's all you get to know. This this one has been popular, though. It keeps showing up on holds lists and things. Yeah. Number six, three weeks on the list, Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. A detective investigating in the wilderness discovers that his actions might affect the timeline of the universe. Wow, actions do have consequences. I didn't think we were going to go for a timeline situation here, though. I mean, when hmm. you're on the sea of tranquility, yeah. you never know 
the yeah. time waves, wavelengths. Right, right. You know, you Isn't know. that on the moon, the Sea of Tranquility? I have no idea. Okay. Number five, <laughs> new this week, Kingdom of Bones by James Rollins. The 16th book in the Signa Force series. An unknown force is putting people in a catatonic state in a village in the Congo. Oh. That's a lot. Wow. A lot of information thrown our way. Yeah. Uh, the Investigator. This is number four, two weeks on the list. The Investigator by John Sanford. Sanford's pretty popular. One of our mm-hmm. top circulating authors here at the David A. Howe Public Library. Yeah, I say so. Also a little too gruesome for me. He is kind of gruesome. Have you read some Sanford? I have had some patrons say, like, you know, they slide me the too book much. and they're like, this one. This okay. One, this one did it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Letty Davenport, the adopted daughter of Lucas Davenport, looks into oil thefts in Texas. Hey, look, musicians <gasps> writing books. Number three, seven weeks on the list, Run, Rose, Run by Dolly Parton. Oh, my God. And James Patterson. I love Dolly. Do you really? I'm going to go to Dollywood this summer. I have been to Dollywood. Is it great? It is. And she was there. (gasps) And I saw her from a distance. No way. She was on a parade float. Did she, like, well, you could definitely see her from a distance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's true. Yeah. She's marvelous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Incredible. no, Dollywood is Dollywood is super fun. Have you never been there? No, I just might be it, my first time. It feels a little bit like a, I don't know. It has the it has the like the charm of an old timey like carnival, like those kind I of rides. That. I love that. But it also has the like sort of immersive world feel of like like Disney or something. Oh wow! You know what I mean? I I'll have to see my yeah. oh yeah. Me and you, my friend you are going. You can see a replica of her house. That's that's like the house she grew up. That's in. great. I'm going to dress as like a mini Dolly Parton when I go. I think you should. It's, it's going to be great. Hopefully she's should. there and doesn't get offended. Babe, I think she'd love it. <laughs> I, I think she would, she would love it. Uh, what's your favorite Dolly Parton song? Oh, uh, I do like 9 to 5. Yeah, it's a yeah, good one. Jolene's great. Jolene. Applejack. I also like Applejack quite a bit. I See, I, I was watching, speaking of Netflix. Okay. She has quite a few Netflix shows. She's really? Got, like the Christmas special. Oh, she's I got, like, yeah. The, the like Heartstrings. Dolly Parton's Coat of Many Colors. Yes. I've seen that. Yeah, Dolly is just, She's just doing it all. And she hmm. keeps going. She does. She just yeah. she just keeps going. She's Remember how she funded that COVID vaccine? Did she though? She did. Wow. She ponied up a lot of dough for that. Oh my gosh. But I mean then she wrote this book with James Patterson she's, and she's, made it all back. Yeah, so yeah. She's, there's an album that goes with this. Really? We have it here in the collection because we still have CDs at the David A. Howe Public Library. CDs are are still are still kicking. Are they? They are. Huh. Yeah. I don't listen to CDs. Do you? I, I do because a lot of my friends have bad cars. There you go. And yeah. they, we don't have an aux player. So that makes sense. So we into the CD That player. makes sense. Some of them even have cassette players. FM transmitter? Yes. That works. Yeah, that does work. Well, the cassette, though, is better, though, with its little cord that you can plug in. Yeah. Yeah. I used to listen to cassettes. Yeah. Yeah. I... There's cassettes in that drawer. Really? Yes, because my old friend Eric Nichols, who used to work here, he only had a cassette player in his car. Huh. And so we would carpool together, and I lugged out all my cassettes. So it's full. Yeah. Wow. And it's not just, like, Disney things or, or the soundtrack to Bye Bye Birdie, if that's what you're thinking. That's what I was thinking. Number two, new this week, Beautiful by Danielle Steele. Danielle Man. Steele. Man. She's, she's on the list again. Oh, my gosh. Just take a rest. Like, does she not have enough with, of the money? Look, look who's at number one. Okay. Danielle Steele, beautiful. A supermodel deals with the effects of a terror attack. Terror attack? Not a terrorist, but just a terror just attack? A terror atta- attack to okay. terror? Either that's a weird ch- word choice or it, it's a weird plot. I don't know. But there's a terror attack at an airport in Brussels on her life and appearance. Hold on. A supermodel deals with the effects of a terror attack in an airport in Brussels on her life and appearance. So okay. she deals with the effects, the effects that affect her life, her and, life and her appearance. So probably like yes. The figures yes, there. probably. Ooh. Well, the cover, she's got kind of a reverse Phantom of the Opera thing happening. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Number one, new this week Dream Town by David Baldacci. The third book in the Archer series, Archer, Dash, and Callahan. Ooh. Ooh. That's a pet peeve of mine. Very like, G. I don't. I don't like it. I yeah, Archer, is yeah. It's very yeah. yeah. It's I like don't know. Thrasher O'Toole and Muscles McGee. Yeah, I you hate need it. like you need like Spike and. Um, anyway, these yeah, I don't know. these three bros are searching for a missing screenwriter who had a dead body turn up in her home. Yeah, as one does. So, <laughs> I don't. David Baldacci. Probably our number one circulating. Yes, and yeah. I've, I've tried so many times. Hate the men's books. Really? I just think they're bad. I've never, never. I don't like the writing. I've picked up a hundred of his books, but never read any of them. 
Nobody has ever been like, yes, you're right about this, so I'm probably wrong. But every time I've read a David Baldacci, I find them to be overly flowery given the tone of the book. Mm. Like, like, just say what you mean, bro. Like a sugar-coated, like... It's just a little too much. It's just like, as he looked at the sun-kissed fields of the... And I'm like... And so saying he okay, just it's, sunset out. It's bright out. All right. Okay. I see what but you mean. But nobody's ever, nobody's ever, like, co-signed that, so... Do you like Maybe um, fantasy books? Because some fantasy mm. books have like really, really long depictions. Uh, they go like hours. You have pages no. of like describing a tree. Yeah. No, I'm I'm never been a big fantasy fan. I see. I I'm mixed feelings. Okay. I, I like playing D and D. I do D and D club yeah, 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 yeah. at the library. Yes. And Wait, I you want to give it a shout out? When yeah, is that? We have a D and D club for um, teens and sort of young adults mm-hmm. here on Fridays. Okay. Um, and you know we're always looking for new members. And if people want to join, what do they do? All they have to do is come to the desk and, and just sort say of inquire, and we'll give them a little sheet. Sign me up. Okay. Yeah. Um, we're gonna hopefully start uh, one for older adults as well because oh, we've okay. had quite a few interested. But it's just like the elderly. To, I mean, if they want to join, it's open. <laughs> right. But we, you know, one wanted something that's a little um, for yeah, yeah, on the more adult end, so that right. you know you don't. Some people yeah. don't want to hang out with sixteen-year-olds, right? But <laughs> right, um, yeah, yeah. So okay, I like fantasy a lot, but more of like crafting fantasy. Got it. So. Like writing? Do you write? I do write. Really? Yes. What do you write? Poetry, and I'm actually writing a novel right now. About what? It's um, it's about Wellsville in the area, actually. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, it's called Allegation County. Okay. And it's kind of a like play on Allegheny County. I get it. And yeah. it's a uh, kind of th- think of like um, Twin Peaks. Okay. Um in its short stories and there's like this area and it's sort of plagued by um, strange occurrences and I'm I'm using some mm-hmm. real life inspiration. Um, yeah. And it's I, th- I don't know. I think it's a it's not necessarily dark, but there's some crime in there. Okay. It's just whimsical and huh. strange. Okay. Yeah. Have you, is this like your biggest undertaking as far as writing before? Or um, have you written other like full length things? I have, I've written a few things. I've written actually, um, I've written a short play. Okay. Um, and. Are these in a place where people could read them or are they just like no, in your mind? they're just, they're, they're in my laptop. Okay. Um, I, I'm trying to. You should to back get, it up just in case. I should. Just I really should. Put it on a floppy disk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I okay. can write a lot. Yeah. Okay, that's fun. I never really have. I I used to teach an acting class, and it was uh, it was for like I don't know, you know, like like eight to thirteen, like mm-hmm. was that range, and short plays for kids that age are just horrible. Bad. I mean, they're just terrible. Bad. And so I would start to write them based on like whoever was in the class at any given yeah. semester, and so I have like. I don't know, probably 10 of those that are like 15 minutes each that all kind of connect together. Oh my gosh. And I always really enjoyed that as an exercise, but I don't like regularly sit down and write. I was a theater major, so oh. all of the, okay. the monologues that yeah. I got growing yeah. up, oh, so bad. Yeah. So bad. Uh-huh. You know when your director gives you like a, a, a monologue about like being depressed, you're like, oh. Fine. I, <laughs> let me, I show up let me get into this headspace. <laughs> yeah. That's super fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone was pretty much typecasted. And it was like, <laughs> oh my lord, what do they, what do they think about me? <laughs> it was, it was, it was great. Yeah. But no, there was some, there was some interesting, um, challenging monologues. I, I prefer more serious drama, actually. Oh, okay. But I unfortunately have been cast in a lot of comedy and musicals, which I, I like, but I, mm-hmm. I, I prefer more of the dramatics. Yeah. And, and like um, Shakespeare, I love Shakespeare, mm. and then Macbeth several times. Am I allowed to say it? Mm-mm. Um, we're not we're not in a we're not at a theater production, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I love careful. Shakespeare and I've also done some Greek tragedy as well. Huh. Um so okay. yeah, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. All right. Well, there's there's no transition into the Lonely Hearts Book Club, so we're just gonna no. dive right into it. Are you ready? I'm I'm so ready. Okay. So, Daphne. Uh, here's what we do here on the Lonely Hearts Book Club. I run a report and I find all the books that are in our system that have either never circulated or haven't circulated since uh, the digitization, which happened mm. in the year 2000. Okay. And so sometimes when we pull a book, we'll look at it and it'll be like, okay, clearly this spine has never, nobody has ever opened a page in this book, ever. Mm. The one I picked today, I don't think that's the case. And it even has an old school stamp in it. And it looks like it was maybe last checked out in 1996. Ooh. So I think, Ooh. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it's been, it's been a minute What were they on reading this in book. 1996? I'm going to tell you. Okay. okay. I've, no, I've purposely, hold on, I got to move this thing. 
There. I've purposely covered it, so you, I want your initial reaction. Today's book is <laughs> Marrying Off Mother <laughs> oh my God. by Christine Noslinger. Oh, my there Lord. There it is. There it is, everyone. Oh, my Lord. All right, so um, let me let me describe. <laughs> Gosh. Oh. Can I even? Uh, let me describe the cover for you here. All right, so we have a we have a, a little girl. Oh, little. A very oddly proportioned girl oh, with she, very she long looks arms. Like a troll. She yeah, she does. She has kind of a troll like vibe. The troll dolls. A little bit, yeah. And she's got she's got the long. She looks like she looks like the little girl from Family Ties. That's a dated reference, everyone. But that's what she looks like. Is she breaking in? I don't know. Is she escaping? I think she's. Her posture to me says she's coming in. She's and the way the happy. the way the curtains are pushing in, it seems like she's like I'm coming in. Uh, so yeah, we got a little girl in jeans and a red button up shirt, uh, long straight blonde hair, and she's trying to break in through a window. And she's climbing in a window. It's a very beige. On the back, we have uh, what reviewers have said about Luke and Angela, another book by this author, who is Christine Noslinger. And in 1981, she was awarded an ALA Notable Book for Children Award for her book, Luke and Angela. So right off the bat, Daphne, looking at this book, <laughs> tell me tell me what you think. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a lot. Okay. I think, uh, uh, I don't know. Is, is this going to be one of those like parent trap books? It could be. Or it, it might be. I don't know. It might be. I can tell you that I do like the cover of uh, the the font on the cover. The font. I should be specific. The font is. It has a stylized a O and off, and I like that. Are you a Are you a font fanatic? Hmm. No one's ever asked me that before. I'm pretty crazy about fonts. I are would, you? Like, How do you look... feel about papyrus? Mm. No, <laughs> overused. Yeah. I there was there was. I agree. I was looking for making posters the other day. I was like searching online, like what font do they use in this show with oh, during the end credits? Because yeah. I want to use that for okay. the specific. That's so cool. I'm, I'm pretty obsessed huh. about fonts. There was. I'm not going to name names. I'm not going to throw okay. shade. There was someone who used to work here, and everything that they did was in Comic Sans. <gasps> everything. No way. It was. Ooh. It was hard. It was a hard time. Do you, did you say used to work here? Used to work here. Okay. Yep, used to work here. <laughs> All right, original cover price, eight ninety five. Eight ninety five for a hardcover. Wow. Not bad. Let me look at our publication date. 1978. And based on the stamp in the back, I would say we probably got this here as a new book. Uh, and it's just been rolling through ever since. Although, again, not since 1996. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 1978 by Anderson Press Limited. All right, I'm going to hit you with a synopsis. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. A disastrous vacation was only the start of Sue's problems. Her parents decided to separate, and Sue suddenly found herself installed with her mother and her sister Julia, J for short, oh. at grandmother's house. It was a household of women. Grandmother, uh-oh, sometimes referred to as the Sergeant Major. Oh. Proverb quoting Great Aunt Alice Ooh. and Mother's younger sister, Aunt Irma. Okay, I thought... Aunt it, Irma. I thought we were going to go sexist when it said it was a household of women. I thought it was going to uh, be like, and they be shopping, but oh so God. far, <laughs> so far, not yet. Not yet. Sue soon found the situation unbearable and decided that the only way out was to marry off her mother. Ooh. She chose her German teacher as a likely candidate <laughs> and set out with single-minded determination to interest him in marriage. Oh. Unfortunately, her plan was so bizarre that he wondered whether Sue was headed for a nervous breakdown. Uh-oh. Sue, however, was undaunted. She and her friend Benny then decided it would be great fun to be brother and sister. They teamed up and what? schemed to get his father and her mother together during a Christmas skiing vacation. All went smoothly until grandmother announced that she and the aunts would not be left behind. Oh. I know. It wasn't long before Sue's plans went hopelessly awry in the most chaotic and comic ways imaginable. Christine Noslinger, the author of Luke and Angela, a 1981 ALA notable book for children, has written another winning story with a delightfully zany character who mer merrily... Del hold on. Delightfully zany characters who merrily lurch and stumble in one another's paths. Merrily, delightfully lurching. And something about zaniness. I, Interesting. I think I'm right. Okay, so... That's a lot. It becomes parent trappy, doesn't it? Yeah, and I feel like giving the synopsis of like hey oh yeah she tries the german teacher that doesn't work out so they try this like 
When that's, did, wouldn't you want to read the book to that's, see that, <laughs> that happened? That's kind of a spoiler, isn't it? It's a little bit. Because you think, oh, it's going to be the German teacher. I want to know more about Aunt Irma. Do you? They said they said proverb teaching one, and they said the sergeant major yeah. grandma. But who's Aunt Irma? What's her Aunt deal? Aunt Irma. She's just the young one? Yeah. Is mother's she, she mother's like, younger sister Aunt she, Irma. Like She's the probably aunt, the hip cool. The wine cool. aunt? Or She's is probably she like the, the, cool the, the like, crystal healing aunt? I'm going to say wine. Wine aunt. I'm gonna say wine. I do love a good wine aunt. I'm gonna say, do you have a wine aunt? Um, no. Would you rather not say? I, it's fine. Yeah, no, I kind of have a wine aunt. Okay. She used to own a winery. Both. But she's actually less the wine aunt, but she is a wine aunt. But she owns the winery. She did own a winery. Yeah. Both my mom and dad only had one sibling each, and they were both guys. So I don't have any like biological aunts unless mm. you go higher up generationally. Great aunts. No wine aunt. Oh, I have a yeah. Do you have a great wine aunt? I have a I guess a my my grandpa's sister maybe you could say is a wine aunt. A great wine aunt. Yeah, great yeah. a great wine aunt. <laughs> um, did did the synopsis do anything for you? Um, did you think like yeah? I feel like I just learned what's going to happen in the, the book. whole plot. Yeah, it's 140 pages. Does that help? Oh, you could knock like, that out. Yeah, yeah, I could. You could knock that out no problem. I could read that. The Christmas angle does that do anything for you? The Christmas angle. Yeah, because they go on like a Christmas ski vacation oh, with the whole right. family. Um, I like the fact that the grandma was like, we're not inviting, we're going yeah, to invite we're, ourselves. We're coming anyway. Like, ooh, Maybe she's a wine grandma. That. All right. Let me tell you a little about the author. Okay. All right. Oh, jacket illustrations by Vaughn Andrews. Vaughn Andrews. So for all of your jacket needs, Vaughn Andrews. Christine Noslinger, who grew up in a suburb of Vienna, Austria. Okay. So there you go. That's probably why we have the German teacher, because I bet her native language, German. Yeah. I would assume. She probably used some of that knowledge. Uh, she attended art school and planned to become a painter. Mm -hmm. She married while still a student, and after the birth of her first child, took a job at a newspaper. Now the mother of two daughters, she's written over a dozen novels for children. Her work has been widely published in both Europe and the United States. Interesting. She's... And I see here, I'm looking up on Goodreads, uh, she does have a, a .de website, so it looks like she's uh, maybe still Austrian based. Um, oh, some other titles include Conrad, the Factory Made Boy, <laughs> the Cucumber King, uh, and then it looks like everything else is uh, in German. Interesting. So I, I, I like how it's like she she wanted you. to be a painter, but then she said like she hired someone for this cover. Yeah, right. That's yeah. That's a good point. It's like. She probably could have done Maybe better. she didn't. We've This has come up in the past with author interviews where they're like, well, we didn't really have any choice over that. Yeah. Or when Susan Wiggs was here, she was saying there was like 50 different versions that of the cover. That was really cool. It was interesting. It was really cool yeah. to see all of the different like concepts she had for different books. That was I have no, I didn't know that about no. authors. Like, I didn't ever think like, oh yeah, there's that process of choosing what I would like to cover. see. I would like to see some alternate versions of this cover. That's what I want. If you look on Goodreads, everyone... Uh, I love good. Do you use Goodreads? I do not. See, if you use Goodreads, you would have been able to know the title of that fashion, fashion book. Yeah, yeah you would have known. Um, boy, these don't look better. Oh, these don't look better, okay. you guys. It's like uh, clip art. Yeah, weird, weird stuff, weird stuff. Okay, well, let me give you some. Let me give you some samples. Okay. You tell me what you think. What are you feeling so far? Are you feeling like people were right to leave this in 1996? Well, I mean, wait—is this a juvenile book? It is. It's a juvenile book. Yeah, it's I technically think... a YA. Okay, YA. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's there's other books that are sort of that genre okay. that okay. do well. Like, I feel like it's kind of boxcar children. So you think maybe way. maybe with a new cover? Maybe. And just release it? Yeah, maybe not maybe. this okay. horrifying visage that you have on there. Oh, yeah. So this must have been written in German because it says translated by Anthea Bell. So we going, were talking I know. about translation. Going back to our wow. conversation, wow. who knows? Who knows how rep maybe there's a better translation of this? Maybe. I don't maybe. know. All right, chapter one. Oh, I like how there's a there's a little page illustration. Oh, the first, it looks like I an open that's window. That's cool. Just like what's her face on the front. Do we have a name for our main character? Sue. 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 That's basic. There was a rose bed in the garden, a round bed full of rose bushes with yellow roses on them. Oh. How many times did you say roses? On. More. Grandmother said they were tea roses, though they were not the color of tea, nor could you make tea out of their leaves. Grand Aunt Alice was always saying, what's in a name? And she had a point there. Oh. Do you like this to her? Oh. I'm going to read you some more. Okay. Sue was walking slowly around the rose bed. If this was a drinking game... How many times? Time, oh, I, I'd be out. You, you would. She, uh, Sue's full name is Susanna Alice Henrietta Carolina Kaufman. Yes. Why would you do that to a kid? Uh, I don't know. I See, I was thinking about naming my kid like this really, really long name as well. 
Really? Yeah, in, in my own name, actually. Okay. I want it, when I go up to change it, I want to sort of add, add a few extended, extras. You know, the drama. Do you want like Alice or Henrietta or Carolina? I think I'll pass on those ones. Okay. Sue walked around the rose. It's another one. The, the rose. Sue walked around the rose bed with her hands clasped behind her back and her head thrust forward. She was making up poetry. <gasps> <laughs> okay, Is I kind of relate to this about you? Okay. Okay. Um, uh, Sue often made up poetry. She had once had a fat pink notebook with a cover saying, Poems, by Susanna Kaufman. My poetry book was not fat or pink, and it didn't say poems on it. What was it like? It was um, It was kind of like, a, it was really crummy. I got it at a dollar store. Okay. But I took um, old clippings of uh, 1950s fashion magazines oh. um, that my art teacher gave me. And I sort of made a collage on the cover, and then I sort of wrote over that. And there was lots of, you know, fun little um, pictures like Joan Crawford and stuff hmm. on the cover. You could have saved some time if you just found a fat pink notebook. I could have. Do you I was want, going for that aesthetic. Do you want to hear more of this? I, yeah, yeah. Sue used to write down her best poems in the pink notebook in beautiful, ornate handwriting. <laughs> But then her sister found the book and read the poems out loud to the whole family. Oh, no. She stood in the middle of the sitting room, arms outstretched, shouting, Listen to this, everyone. The latest masterpiece by the famous young poet Susanna Alice Henrietta Carolina Kaufman. Wow. What's the poem? The, <laughs> I don't think I want to say. The poem is called The Black People. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Here Sue's sister paused dramatically and rolled her eyes. Uh, Silence, please. Oh, no. Oh yikes! Is this? I don't. Do we I don't think. I, I don't. Maybe think, there's a reason I don't that this shouldn't be picked up. Oh no! There's a little bit more of the poem. Oh, uh, let's get. <laughs> let's get back. We've made an important discovery today here, oh. Daphne. Uh, chap- oh. Chapter four. <laughs> See. <laughs> Here's the thing. I purposely don't vet these first because yeah. I want to have my own like initial reaction yes. to it as well. Oh, that was, I could have oh I could have read a little bit of this. Oh. Huh. Okay. Maybe this is the first Lonely Hearts book that we'll immediately discard yeah. when we finish the podcast. Yeah. But I'm gonna read to you from oh, chapter four. Okay. I'm gonna read to you from we can okay. recover. Yeah. We can recover. We can. Chapter 4. Sue was left alone. She thought, Benny's right after all. He told her he thought women just couldn't get along together. (laughs) Come on. This is great. Come on. You know, we're hitting all the bosses today. His father said so. Okay, so his father. It's his father who's the sexist. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because there are so many women in this house. (laughs) Maybe skip a chapter. Skip the next chapter. All right. Okay. Let's find another one. Woo! Okay. Chapter 10. Oh. Fingers crossed. Sue did not sleep tight. She had a nightmare. Aunt Alice walked through the nightmare, shouting proverbs in her ear. Grandmother was behind her with a butterfly net, trying to catch her. Mr. Meyer set his dog on her, and Sue was scared of Mr. Joseph because suddenly he was not a fat old dachshund anymore, but a savage, gigantic hound. Then the manager of the... Cammy? Camus? Came and explained why mother had to eat carrots and dry toast because grandmother had indigestion. This is nonsense. This is the whole nightmare. book took place in a snow-covered meadow, and in the middle of the meadow stood a door saying private. I hate when people think, tell me their dreams in real life. Yeah, I think this is probably the, the author's dream, and she Could just be. wrote this down. She's Could like, be. Yeah. Wow. Dry toast and carrots for indigestion. That's weird. Interesting. Okay. How does this book end? Um, yeah, should we, do you, want, you want me to skip to the ending? I don't know. Do you want to do you risk reading a I, few more? I think the book has been blurbs? spoiled. Yes. All right. Let's do it. Um, let's see. Let me tell you if this, any, if this tells you anything. Okay. All right. Well, we won't get home till late tonight, said Mother. These are the final words here. So we won't be able to celebrate our presents and have our Christmas Eve celebrations the same as usual. Sue and Jay began to laugh. They laughed so loud they woke Father, who came out of the bedroom. Wait, they have a father now? Oh, they, got, they got a father. Bedroom in his one red sock and one blue sock. Did we wake you up, said Mother, full of concern. I feel wonderfully rested, said Father. Well, how about starting for home? You'll have to pay the bill first, Fred, (laughs) said Mother. So maybe Fred is the dad. Interesting. And maybe they just get back together in the end? Maybe. Wow. Interesting. 
Wow. I mean, I guess I was expecting that there'd be some sort of like very oh, parent trap. You better, you better get in the added kitchen. Added content there. Yeah, I thought we were gonna get some like you were supposed to be in the kitchen, Sue's. Like I, I was expecting a little bit of that. Yeah. Starting with a racist poem. I. Yeah. I wouldn't have. I mean, expect the unexpected. But and I, I yeah, feel like we got it. You know. I don't, uh, yeah, it's a little more questionable than The Parent Trap. I, I think it is. Do you like The Parent I, Trap? I love The Parent Trap. I love it. I've seen it a million times. Have you seen the sequels? There's sequels? Yeah, there's sequels with Haley Mills when she's oh. like grown up and her mm-hmm. daughter's Parent Trap. There's like two or three of them. Interesting. Yeah. They shouldn't have done it, but. They're, they're there. But they're there. Okay. They're there if you want it. Uh, I'm going to say that the book is just uh, too dated. Uh, yeah. It's I think not it's, aged well. I think it's too dated. Oof. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. All right. So the book again, Marrying Off Mother by Christine Noslinger. Uh, if you run here right now, maybe you can check it out. Otherwise, probably not. Yeah, it's probably going to be gone. Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. Well, Daphne, that was an eventful Lonely Hearts book club Yeah. Uh, for your for your debut here on the podcast. Yeah, that was very eventful. Yeah, I think so. I'm having like whiplash. I know. I know. I didn't know. I didn't know where we were headed with that one. A couple of times we've read one and I've been like, this sounds good. I really, really? like it. Really? This this was not this was no. not in that category, but there no. have been some where I thought, okay, I've read a couple of the ones we picked. Sometimes they're just shockingly, upsettingly bad. Ooh. So I do like a good bad book, though. Yeah, no, I don't. I can't go with you I on like that. A good, I can't book. go down that road with you because if you're watching like a bad show or movie, that's like an hour, two hours. You know, yeah. reading a bad book. I just think like poorly written books are kind of fun. Well, maybe... as long as they're not problematic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think. Yeah, leave some, the poetry some, out. Some, maybe and, some yeah. bad books are are. I don't yeah. know. I feel like they're entertaining occasionally. Okay. Mm, I don't. I so well. You know what? Okay. Sometimes a book is bad in a way that you still want to know what happens, and you're still yes. invested, and you finish, and you're like, "That was a wild ride," yes. and it sucked, and yeah. that can be kind of fun. It makes good conversation. Yeah, if, I'll give you that. You know, especially if it's like a semi-popular book. I'll give you that. Me. Okay. All right. Well. You know, they can't all be winners. No. And marrying off mother. It was not a winner. No. But the, the kids got back together. I mean, the parents. The, the parents. Kids. Not the kids. <laughs> the kids. The, I mean, the parents got back together. I'm a child of divorce. I was always rooting for the parents to get back together. So, you know. Yeah. Maybe they've changed. Maybe maybe, maybe, maybe their changed. relationship will work now. Uh, may, yeah. That's usually how it goes, yeah, it really isn't it? Is how it goes. After a breakup and you get back together, it's usually better. Yeah. That's the yeah. conventional wisdom, yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Well, um,. That's it for the Lonely Hearts Book Club. What do we got coming up library-wise? Uh, this episode, definitely, is going to air on Monday the 9th. So okay. well, what do we have we coming have up after Monday the 9th? We have a concert okay. on the 21st. Okay, um, of Matt May. Matt Burns. Uh-huh. He's an acoustic guitarist. Okay. And he's pretty good. You All right. You should come and check it out. Down it's in the auditorium. Seven. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, yeah, we're, we're going to have... Exhibition room? What do we got rolling in the exhibition we'll room? We'll have the, uh, the Wellsville... Um, art show. Oh, yeah, yeah. The school. The high school, yeah. Yeah, and they're going to have a little opening, too. I can't remember what day that That's was. always so much fun because they pack the room. Yes. I mean, do. pictures are hung almost Everywhere. up to the ceiling. Everywhere. You can Sculptures. hardly maneuver in there. No floor space available. Yeah, it's a good time. You so drop in. Drop into the exhibition room. Uh, the book club is currently reading Cool for the Summer, and we have copies here that you can check out. We're also starting a new Discord-only uh, graphic novel book club. The first thing we read was Frank Miller's Batman Year One. And in June, early June, we're going to be talking about Doctor Strange. We'll talk all things Doctor Strange, but specifically the graphic novels we're reading are the Jason Aaron series, which starts with The Way of Weird, which we do have here in the collection. And we've got things planned for the Discord graphic novel book club going on later than that. So you can drop us a note. You can send us a message uh, right on All the Books Show on Twitter or David A. Howe Public Library on Facebook or send us an email at wellsville at stls.org. Tell us you want to be in the Discord and we'll hook you up. Discord's and great. And you can book club with us. Yeah. I'm the Discord. Are you? Yeah. I, we had uh, the teens uh, for D&D yeah. do it and then we open up to pretty much everyone. Yeah. It's kind of everything. So it's, I know. It. The library Discord seems like it's gaining some yeah, traction, and, and some there's, traffic. There's quite a bit of um, interesting interactions yeah. and, you know, good way to talk to patrons. Yeah. And, you know, it's fun. Okay. It's a fun moment. All right. Well, next time here on the podcast, Allie and I are going to be talking about Doctor Strange. So you can read along with us and talk some Doctor Strange. Daphne, thanks for joining me. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Mm. Uh, see you next time, everybody. <laughs>